Last week, I talked about white dwarfs and how the physicist, Indian physicist, Subramanian Chandrasekhar was able to figure out how white dwarfs exist. That this is material that is compressed so tightly together that the quantum mechanical rules that dictate how electrons behave are able to support this object against the crushing weight of its own gravity. And I talked about how this cracked the door open into the world of black holes because there is a maximum mass limit to how big white dwarfs can get before that electron degeneracy pressure is overwhelmed and then they just keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. The concept of black holes. Remember, uh, in the early 20th century, no one really wanted black holes to exist because they were just too weird to admit and so we we're trying to find any explanation possible to avoid the existence of black holes. And, there's, and we found a potential solution. Now, the solution ended up being short-lived as a way to like prevent stars from actually turning into a black holes. Uh, but for a while, it, it seemed like, okay, we don't have to allow for black holes because we have something else. And that something else is called neutron stars. They were first proposed in the 1930s. Like, like it's, it's hard to remember, or it's easy to forget, take your pick that neutrons themselves weren't discovered until like the 1920s. Like we've only known about the existence of the neutron for about a hundred years. So that's just crazy. This is a fundamental constituent of matter and we've only known about it for a hundred years. But that's, that's a, another discussion. Neutrons. Once we realize that neutrons exist and are a thing, a couple of astrophysicists, Walter Bade and Fritz Zwicky, yeah, that's right, Fritz Zwicky, which is my favorite astronomy name ever, uh, Fritz Zwicky proposed the existence of neutron stars. We're like, okay, maybe somehow, we don't know exactly how, but maybe somehow you can pile a bunch of neutrons together and they're not, uh, they're not electrically repulsive. You know, are not bouncing around a lot. They're just sitting there being neutrons and being kind of boring. Uh, and maybe they can support themselves up against gravity because you can take all the rules of degeneracy pressure, of how electrons are able to support a white dwarf star, and just apply it to neutrons and you get a different kind of object. This different kind of object is going to be a lot smaller then a white dwarf star is going to be a lot more dense, but it'll be stable. It, it can just hold itself up. And this was very interesting to early 20th century astronomers because they're like, oh, I get it. If a white dwarf gets too big, it overwhelms the electron degeneracy pressure and then starts collapsing. Maybe somehow, or we'll figure out the details later, it turns into a neutron star and then it can just hang out there for trillions of years and then we don't have to allow black holes to exist. However, largely this idea of the neutron star was just tabled because no one had seen a neutron star, no one knew what to look for. Uh, there was this little minor inconvenience known as World War II, which put a pause on a lot of fundamental research. Um, and the idea really was just put on the back burner. Like no one really paid attention to neutron stars. And then in the 1960s, two radio astronomers, Anthony Hewish and Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Uh, we're working in uh, the Cambridge uh, Radio Observatory, and they detected a little a little signal at, at a very specific frequency in the radio. It seemed to come from a very specific source on the sky, and it was just repeating very regularly, very like beep, 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 not literally beep, beep, but like in the radio, beep, 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 like that. At first, they were a little bit, uh, you know, like, I wonder what that is. It, it seems oddly irregular for this to be something generated by nature. So, you know, maybe it's aliens. So they called it LGM-1. They called the source LGM-1 or for little green men one. Like, you know, uh, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's going to be aliens. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's, let's give it a shot. You never know. Turns out it wasn't aliens because then they started seeing more and then more and then more. And like, oh, wow, we're actually surrounded by aliens. Or this is just some new kind of astrophysical object. 
We call this kind of object a pulsar because that's exactly what it does. It goes beep, 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 beep. It pulses in the radio. After a few years, astronomers and astrophysicists realized what pulsars were. These pulsars were neutron stars. Neutron stars were proposed in the 1930s. Now we're talking the 1960s. Three decades later, people accidentally discover neutron stars, go back to this old research of Walter Bate and Fritz Zwicky, uh, and figure out like, oh, I get it. Neutron stars, if, if they can, if they're highly magnetized, then they can send out beams of radiation. These beams of radiation can like make circles in the sky. And if it passes over the earth, then we'll get a flash of radio and then a flash and then a flash and a flash and a flash. It will appear to pulse in the sky just because of the alignment of this beam of radiation coming out of one end. A pulsar is a neutron star. Voila, we have discovered neutron stars. They are now a real thing in our universe. And we kickstarted a whole bunch of work on the properties of neutron stars. Now, if you thought white dwarfs were weird and you should think white dwarfs are weird, neutron stars are out of like they're beyond insane. They're beyond insane. This is a neutron star is a ball of neutrons about the size of a city. You can fairly say that a neutron star is the largest atomic nucleus ever discovered. Like 10 to the 57 neutrons crammed into a ball the size of a city. These things weigh more than the sun. These are several times more massive than the sun. So all that mass, this is about the densest material possible that you can find in known physics. Uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like a, a thimble full weighs more than the Great Pyramids. Like a bucket weighs more than the Earth. If the gravity is so strong, it can actually bend light into a circle. You can have light orbiting a neutron star. Uh, the tallest mountains are just like a centimeter high. That, that's the highest you can get because gravity is so strong. And if you were to fall off of that mountain, by the time you fell that one centimeter, you'd be traveling at like half the speed of light. Neutron stars are insane, but they are real. We see them all the time. But they are not the end of the line. There is a maximum mass for neutron stars too. Now, this is a little bit harder to calculate because the interiors of neutron stars are very, very strange places that we don't fully understand. So the limit here on the maximum size of a neutron star is a little bit fuzzy. But it's like around five-ish solar masses. And if you put too much material on a neutron star, it will collapse the neutron degeneracy pressure won't be able to hold it up. And then you're going to get a black hole. And as far as we know, there is no, there are no more stopping places between neutron star and black hole. That's the end of the line. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. And go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep supporting this show. And I'll see you next time.